and welcome. I'm Harriet Agbenyi. Tonight, President Muhammadu Buhari insists his administration is willing to swap Boko Haram detainees for the missing Chibok girls, provided certain conditions are met. Niger Delta Minister Uhuru Usana says the government has not ruled out the option of dialogue with Niger Delta militants. International rock star Bono visits Nigeria for the second time to promote his advocacy group, One Campaign, which aims to pressure governments to improve transparency and accountability. And Turkey says it has killed 25 militants near Jaroblus in Syria, while a monitoring group reports 35 civilian deaths from the same area. President Mohamed Buhari is back in the country after attending the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. While in the East African country, the president told journalists that his administration is willing to swap Boko Haram prisoners for the Chibok of girls, provided certain conditions are met. The conditions, according to the president, include the release of the list of detainees to benefit from the proposed swap and the group's willingness to discuss with the federal government. Earlier today, the president, on his Twitter handle, renewed his commitment to the rescue of the Chibok girls while paying glowing tributes to the military for their efforts in the war against insurgency in the Northeast. In another tweet, the president said, quote, I reiterated in Nairobi that we want our Chibok girls safe. We want them out. We're doing all we can to reunite them with their families. End of quote. Well, earlier in the week, some parents of the Chibok girls challenged the government to do everything possible to secure the release of the girls. The parents who joined members of the Bring Back Our Girls group for yet another protest said they will not relent until they see what they call persuasive action from the government. The, the insurgents have come out asking him, let him release their people so that they will give us our daughters. So my call for the president, please let him come at our aid so that he will release the people of the Boko Haram on exchange of our daughters. And they say they lose our girls until their fighters are released. Okay, they have been working on it, working on it, working on it. Up to today, they are still working on it without results. Well, the federal government has set up a committee to look into the dialogue with Niger Delta militants. Speaking today on our, one of our programs, Sunday Politics, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs explained that the committee set up by the presidency will interface with the agitators with the aim to end militancy in the region. Mr. Uguru also told Channels Television that efforts at mopping up arms in the region are on course. Various camps tend to have various representations. Nonetheless, we are not taking any one of them for granted. Government goes ahead to talk with whoever comes. And from the discerning impressions we build and background information and progressive discussions, every one of them has uh, its own perspective. And the, 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 the discussion is being led by such perspectives. However, I want you to understand that in whatever form it is coming, to ask who is leading the government team. Of course, you are aware that the, the federal government set up a presidential committee on this. There are other feeder interests discussing at levels that feed the presidential team. So at the time that the government decides on which front to actually see as a front that represents the uh, uh, militants, maybe you will know. Again, it's not for the government to decide, but it's for the, the, the people who are agitating, who are militating, to tell us they are unified in one front suggesting this group.
the Minister of Niger Delta, Mr. Oguru Usana. Well, the Nigerian army has confirmed it is making progress in the Niger Delta, verifying the soldiers have killed five militants. According to the army, the operation in the River Rhine area is to end criminal activities including kidnapping, militancy and piracy. This has come in barely 24 hours after the military announced that it has begun an operation to mop up arms in the region. Meanwhile, the police command in River State reports killing six armed robbers along Uhiuke axis of the east-west road in Ahoda East Local Council. The police public relations officer, Mr. Nnamdi Imoni, said the robbers were nabbed while trying to escape on a bus on its way to Port Akut. The leader of the gang has been identified as General Ibudu, who the police say is responsible for several killings in Ahoda community. Staying with security issues, three days after suspected herdsmen attacked in Diago town in Enugu state, a woman identified as Ifoma Agbo has been confirmed dead, in addition to the Catholic seminarian Lazarus Mwafo, who died on the day of the attack. When Channel's television visited the community, there was palpable fear in the community as indigents gathered in groups discussing the sad development. The state police command confirmed a suspect has been arrested. Ndiago is the second community in Enugu state where suspected herdsmen have attacked indigenes, the first being Nimbo, where scores of people were killed. The people of Ndiago in Nkano West local government area say they lost a Catholic seminarian and one woman identified as Ifomabu in the incident. The village is calm, but one can tell that the people are living in fear. This is the home of Ifoma Agbo, the second victim of the attack. There is no sign of mourners and no family member agrees to talk. The leader of the community says enough is enough. The government should take immediate step to stop this. It's a national matter. Nobody is happy. They should leave. You see, my people are crying on daily basis that they should leave the, the, the community. They will leave our land for us. We, I, we don't sign any agreement with them. They don't pay us any rent. Nothing. How can someone just carry his cows, come to farmland, destroy people this thing, and, and, and sometimes come and attack the person? Without them, we don't have any crash with them. Before now. I don't know why. Some kilometers away from the village is this deserted hamlet with clusters of thatched houses where the herdsmen are said to reside. None of them is available for comments. The police are not taking this attack lightly as they claim they have already arrested a suspect. Having on the spot assessment uh, of what happened and thereafter we are able to make a deployment to the place to avert uh, further incidents and to reassure the people uh, that uh, their life is secure than all that. The local authorities disturbed and would want the security operatives to look into the matter to prevent a recurrence. We cannot take this any longer. We are begging government. The government should come. We have government at the federal. Okay. They should do something. I don't think anything has been said about this full any incidents. It has not been mentioned. There is no decision yet. I don't know whether they are just full any or where uh, is another Boko Haram. When the first attack occurred in Nimbo community, Enugu state government began surveillance in the community. What could have happened? Did the government relax? Are the government operatives still patrolling the area? Then how did this second attack come about? Perhaps there is need for all involved to take this matter more seriously to prevent a third incident. Well, joining me now on the news at 10 to talk more about some of the trending security stories is a retired colonel, Hassan Stan Labo. He's a security consultant and the managing director, Hakes and Partners. So good evening to you, Colonel. Thank you so much for joining me on Thank the news you. at 10. Thanks. So let's start from the <coughs> top where we know that the president has uh, made commitment to uh, swap the Chibok girls for some of the Boko Haram detainees. What do you make of this development? Well, it's a welcome development, I must say. It's a welcome development. Good news to the parents, good news to Nigerians. Okay? And um, 
for the very first time, I would say, in a very bold manner, the father of the nation, who is the president, is saying, yes, let's go on with swap. And so it becomes a major item on the discussion table. Now, one of the reasons, or one of the, um, the items they're negotiating for is the release of some of their leaders. Now, we have had issues before now where we know that the federal government has tried to, you know, dialogue with the Boko Haram um, group to try to find uh, an amicable resolution to some of their challenges. Do you think it has been confirmed if this is the real deal, if this is the real group that they're dealing with, or a splinter group? We have to... As a nation, we have to make sure we sort that out, that we're actually dealing with the, 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 the main group. Because like it is now, so far, we know there are two major factions. And um, we need to know if our girls are split between these two factions. If they're only with one, then maybe we'll deal with that and move on. If they are split, we must see how we're able to forge a unified uh, leadership. I mean, sorry, a unified team from their own end, because we cannot forge a unified leadership, the unified team from their own end, to discuss with us. Yes, the president says before we <coughs> go ahead to release any of, uh, of your leaders or any of the detainees that we have of the Boko Haram, we must confirm that the list of the girls that we have corresponds with the list of the girls that you have with you. How do we make sure that that goes seamlessly? Because, you know, it's a strategy where a lot of people are seeing that um, at the end of the day, we might lose some, we might gain some. How do you think they should proceed to make sure that this strategy ensures that there isn't um, casualties from both parties? Mr. President's conditions there resonates comfortably with me. I have said it in several media uh, interfaces as this, that it is important they give us the nominal role of the girls with them. It is important we actually ascertain that these girls are alive. And that brings me to the issue of uh, 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 whoever is serving as the arbitrary go-between between us and them, that platform must be a credible, uh, a credible platform with a huge dose of integrity. Okay, is it the International Red Cross that will be coming to play that role and interface between us, or some major respected personality globally, such as the late? Nelson Mandela and so on. But whoever it is, it must be someone who will make sure that there will be few or no casualties in this particular move. No, we are talking about negotiations now, so the issue of casualty does not come in, except if we were to be resorting to uh, a military rescue action. And that is why it is good we are negotiating. It have avails us the opportunity of being able to get the entire girls together. Okay, so what do you also make about this, um, the federal government's move as well to mop up arms? Even the Minister of Maji Delta uh, Affairs also talked about it uh, this evening on, on Sunday politics. Is this achievable? Should there be an incentive to make sure that uh, even though they go about mopping these arms, people should be willing to bring them out? Well, I would say it is achievable to an extent because, frankly, you cannot look forward to having 100% uh, um, a success story when you talk about mopping up arms. It can only be achieved to a reasonable extent. And that is where the issue of incentive comes in. Government must be ready to place certain incentives that will make the whole idea of mopping arms or bringing forth arms very attractive. Cardinal, thank you so much for joining me on the News at 10. I appreciate it. In part two after the break, residents of Abaji in the federal capital territory face a growing water crisis with 90% of the water in the community declared unfit for human consumption.